Hello everybody, welcome to the fourth trig lecture. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the three other functions, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Um, and we're going to talk about graphing some of these trig functions. So uh, let's get started talking about uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. So remember that when you have your angle, theta, it corresponds to um, a coordinate x, y, right, on the unit circle, and that cosine and sine were defined completely based on uh, the values of that coordinate for that angle. Um, so as long as you know the coordinates, you know cosine of theta and you know sine of theta. Um, and then tangent came along, and it was based on just the, the ratio of sine to cosine. Um, and we developed a couple of nice triangles, and from those nice triangles we were able to figure out some of the values uh, for sine, cosine, and tangent, and then uh, and that was sort of it. Uh, the group work that we just did was for reference angles. At some point I'm going to put up a, a group work discussion talking about that to reinforce it, uh, but we don't need them to talk about what we're going to do next. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come up for functions which are 1 over x, 1 over y, and instead of y over x, x over y. And uh, what those are going to be called is secant theta, cosecant theta, and cotangent theta. Right, so secant is 1 over cosine of theta, because it's 1 over x. Cosecant is 1 over sine of theta, because it's 1 over y. And cotangent, instead of being sine over cosine, is just cosine theta over sine theta. And um, if you think about it, what we have now is we have all possible ratios for our unit triangle. Right, so here is our unit triangle. There's theta. Down here at the bottom we had x, we had y, and we had 1. And so the six possible ratios are y to 1, x to 1, y to x, x to y, 1 to x, and 1 to y. Right? Pick any two sides, put one over the other. And these are the six possibilities, and these are the six functions. Looking back again, we have cosine, sine, and tangent. And here's cosine, there's sine, and here's tangent, and then here's cotangent, and secant, and cosecant. And so there's our six functions. It's all six possible ratios of sides for the, the right triangle with theta, right, and x as its adjacent side. So, uh, what can we do with these? Well, we can just basically answer some questions involving right triangles. So, let's go ahead and set up a right triangle. So here's a perfectly good question. Suppose that you know that sine of some angle is 5 thirteenths, and that that angle is in quadrant 2. The question is, what are the values for the five other trig functions in that quadrant. So let's draw a picture of what's happening. Here we are in our unit circle. Your angle is there because we're in quadrant 2, so there's your theta. And then here is the point, whatever it is, x comma y, that gives us 5 thirteenths. Right? We know that sine is 5 thirteenths. Well, we also know that sine is which value? It's the y value. And so that goes ahead and replaces y with 5 thirteenths. So the, a couple of questions. What is x? Right? Um, and then from those, we can figure out all of the other trig functions, right? So we know x has to be negative because we're in quadrant 2. But let's figure out the triangle that's going to help us solve that. 
that triangle. Remember, we always draw our triangle back to the x-axis. This is the one thing that we learned from our group work, is that really the triangle you want always drops to the x-axis. So the one in quadrant two, 2 drops there. And so if we redraw that, our y was 5 thirteenths. This is 1, and then we just have to figure out what that is. And it's not so bad. It's 1 squared minus 5 thirteenths squared. And then we just take the square root, right? Because if that's a, b, and c, you get that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But what we're looking for is a. And so a is the square root of c squared minus b squared. And if you calculate that, you get that it is 12 thirteenths, but don't forget, right, that it has to be, it has to be negative because we're in quadrant 2. Right, so x is negative 12 thirteenths. So let's go to our next page. We get y is 5 thirteenths, and x is negative 12 thirteenths. And so cosine of theta is just x, It's just x, which is just negative 12 thirteenths. Tangent of theta. Remember, the tangent is just sine divided by cosine. It's y over x. So it's 5 thirteenths divided by negative 12 thirteenths. Now, since both are over 13, the thirteens cancel. And we're left with negative 5 twelfths. Cosecant is 1 over sine, and so it's the um, inverse, it's the flip of 5 thirteenths, and so it's 13 fifths. Secant is 1 over cosine, and so it's negative 13 twelfths, and cotangent is just 1 over tangent, so it's negative 12 fifths. And we're done we have solved for the five other values. Alright, so suppose you're told that tangent of theta is three-fourths and that theta is in quadrant three. Right, so this, this three-fourths is definitely not an angle that we know. Right, we don't, get, we don't have any of the angles that we're familiar with give us three-fourths when we do tangent. But, um, let's draw a picture of what's happening. Here's your circle. There is your angle. Remember, theta always comes from the positive x direction. And let's draw this triangle. Right, so we can figure out the x and y values. Really what we need is the x and y values, if we have them, we can figure out every trig function for this theta, because they're only based on the x and y values. So down here is x, up here is y. And we were told that tangent, right, which we know to be y over x, was 3 fourths. Now, you don't have to make this 1, right? 1 is okay, but it's not a requirement for it. So why don't we make that 4 Oop. how about I fix that why don't we make that 3 and this 4 right that's going to give us the same ratio 3 to 4 now we have to be careful of course um, because it's not really 3 and 4 when we put it on the circle it's really negative 4 and negative 3. Right? If we solve, this should be um, sort of obvious to you because this is a familiar right triangle. It's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Um, we could, 
divide everything by 5, divide by 5, divide by 5, and that makes our hypotenuse 1 again. And then we're left with 3 fifths and 4 fifths. And everything works out the same, but 3, 4, 5 works out just as well in terms of figuring out all of the trig functions. So we have tan theta equals y over x is 3 fourths. So what we want is we want to figure out sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Well, cotangent's an easy place to start since it's just 1 over tangent, and so that's 4 thirds. That was practically free. And remember, the triangle we're going to be working with is a 3, 4, 5. And so we just need to make sure that our signs match up, and that's really it. So um, our sign is going to be um, our y value divided by our hypotenuse. Remember, we can also use SOHCAHTOA. And so opposite over hypotenuse is 3 over 5. But remember, right, we are in quadrant 3. And we have all students take calculus. Only tangent and 1 over tangent are going to be positive in quadrant 3. So let's go ahead and fix the sine. Since sine is negative, we just make this negative. Cosine is going to be 4 fifths, but it's also going to be negative. And you can see, see here when we fixed the triangle 4 fifths and 3 fifths, that's where they're showing up under sine and cosine, because that's really the y value and the x value. Now, secant is 1 over cosine, so it's negative 5 fourths. And then cosecant, which is 1 over sine, is negative 5 thirds. We filled in the table. So what we're going to do next is we're going to graph sine theta. And so if we look at some values of theta and our table, we have 0, we have pi over 6, we have pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2, we take sine theta, we got 0, 1 half, we're at 2 over 2, we're at 3 over 2, and 1. And then let's go ahead and do some of the next ones and see what happens. So uh, when we go bigger than pi over 2, right? We get 7 pi over, all right, sorry. So the values in uh, the next quadrant that we're going to be concerned about, we, all, we already have pi over 2 up at the top. Right? We're already up in this direction. And so if we go another pi over 6 past pi over 2, we'll be at 2 pi over 3. And then um, if we go pi over 4 past pi over 2, we're at 3 pi over 4. And if we go pi over 6 before pi, we're at 5 pi over 6. And remember, the sine value is the y value. And so when you look at your circle, two angles have the same y value if they're the same angle above the x-axis. And so 2 pi over 3 and pi over 3 are actually the same height above the x-axis. And so we get radical 3 over 2 again. We get radical 2 over 2. We get 1 half. And then at pi we get 0. And so you can see sine gradually increases from 0 to 1 and then back down to 0. If we take into account that if you go the same angle below, 
If this is y, that's negative y. And so as we dip below, um, we're just going to get exactly the same values, but negative. So I'm going to go ahead and set up some of these on a, on a graph for you. So for, for sine, here are uh, those values that we just calculated, going back, uh, gradually increasing from 0 to 1, and then back down to 0. As we increase, and you can see here, from x equals 0 to a half, and then keep going down to pi. And so our, our first segment of sine looks like this. And what you can guess happens is that um, what we do is we, we decrease, instead of going up to 1, we decrease to negative 1. And so down here is negative 1 at 3 halves. And we're going to follow exactly the same arc because our um, angles of decline um, are going to match up precisely to our angles of incline. So we're going to drop down and then come back up. And here's our graph of sine theta. Now if you make a table um, of values and you want to graph cosine of theta, it's going to look incredibly similar. Except instead of starting at um, 0, cosine, remember, starts at 1. And so if I include um, here pi over 2, pi, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, cosine starts at 1 and drops to negative 1 by the time we're at pi, because remember, at pi we're facing over here and the x value is negative 1, and then by the time we're back at 2 pi we're back facing to the right, and so what we're going to get is a graph that looks just like the sine graph, right, that looks really similar, um, except it's been shifted, right, it's moved over a little bit. And so here's a graph of sine theta, and here's a graph of cosine of theta. Uh, we'll leave graphing tangent and the uh, secant, cosecant, and cotangent to another day, but these are two perfectly good graphs to know, um, and you should know certain things about the angles for example, you should know when cosine is a half because those are equations we've been solving before. So you should be able to label the x values beneath those two points um, and so on. So go ahead, do the homework, um, and I'll see you in class.